guys, my name is Sabina and welcome to another video. Today I have a different kind of setup because I'm going to show you guys my bookshelf tour of 2017. Last year I did my bookshelf tour in January and ever since January a couple of things have changed. Um, I've gotten a job which means that I got more money which means that I spend more money on books and yeah I got more books. I even got a whole new shelf. So I have a ton of more books to show you guys. If I counted correctly, I have over like 100 books here on my shelves, which I think is just like, wow, because I even have some couple of books in my other closet, which are like children's books. So I'm not really going to show that to you guys. I'm just going to show you guys my young adult, new adult, adult books that I have here with me. I'm going to try to not edit this video too much because otherwise it will probably take me three to four hours to edit this video. Which I think is crazy, and I don't really want to sit that long at a computer, which I normally always do because of watching Netflix, but I don't want to sit at my computer for four hours editing a video. Let's just start off with my first bookshelf right here. This is the IKEA Billy bookshelf, I think. It's the smallest one. Okay guys, so the angles for this video won't be the best, but let's start off with this bookshelf. Uh, I ordered my bookshelves, both of them. On like rainbow color I just love the way a rainbow shelf looks I don't have the perfect rainbow shelf but I try to do my best so let's start off with shelf number one right here um, first of all I have my little Han Solo pop thing right there I got this as sort of like a joke for my dad because last year I watched the Star Wars movies for the very first time maybe even two years ago with him and I really liked it so he got me this thing so I'm gonna put it right here for the right now um, so let's start off with the first book and that one is The Unbecoming of Mara Dyer by Michelle Hodkin this is the first book in the paranormal fantasy trilogy then I have Prodigy by Mary Lou, the second book in the Legend trilogy. The Warrior Air by Sid Williams Chima, which is the first one in the Air Chronicles. I see you right there. And the next one is The Fifth Wave by Rick Yancey. Then I have An Ember in the Ashes by Salva Tahir, which is the first book in, I think it's gonna be a quartet. I'm not too sure, but the second book came out, I think last August or something. And then I have the third book in the Mortal Instruments series. So this is uh, City of Glass by Cassandra Clare. The next book that I have is Slammed by Colleen Hoover. This is the first book and I think a trilogy. Then I have Looking for Alaska by John Green. To be honest guys, I'm not the biggest John Green fan. Like I'm actually not a John Green fan, so. Um, then I have the first and second book in the Lunar Chronicles. So Cinder and Scarlet by Marissa Meyer. I've read Cinder, liked it. I still need to continue on with the series though, um, but I'm not too eager on getting to it anytime soon. Then I have Love Letters to the Dead by Ava Delaria. And the last book on this shelf right here is Throne of Glass by Sarah J. Mass. Let's put Han Solo back on his place and move on to the next shelf. So here I have my Daenerys Targaryen Funko Pop. I recently got this one and I absolutely adore it because Daenerys is one of my favorite characters and I love her little dragon so much. Um, so let's put this right here on the shelf underneath it. Um, the first book on this shelf is kind of like a secret little it has its own secret little place and it is peter pan by jm barry still need to read this children's classic i just love the cover so very much um then i have a court of mist and fury by sarah j Mass, which is one of the biggest books that i own one of my favorite books as well i can't wait for the court of rings and ruin i think that no one can wait for that book um then i have the raven boys by maggie stiefather still need to get to this um, I think it's like Magical Realism Quartet. Then I have Shatter Me by Tara Maffey. Definitely not gonna read the other two books in the trilogy. It's not my favorite book ever. Then I have The Death Cure by James Dashner. This is the third book in the, what's it called again? The Maze Runner um, trilogy. Then I have A Rebel of the Sands by Alwyn Hamilton. Such a good book. I really, really enjoyed it. Then I have one of my very few box sets. I don't really get box sets that often because I always want to read the first book first to know for sure if I really like the books. But here I have the Percy Jackson and the Olympian series by um, Rick Riordan. I have to think about that. I've read the first four books, still need to read the last one. Um, but hopefully I can do that this year because it'd just be nice to finish another series. Then I have Era Fire by Sarah J. Mass, also a gigantic book because that woman writes ginormous fantasy books 
And then the last book on the shelf is Since You've Been Gone by Morgan Matson, one of my favorite summer contemporaries. Love it so very much. But hi guys, again, weird kind of camera angle, but this is my favorite shelf because I love blue colors. Blue is my favorite color. You can sort of tell it from my room, but I have my favorite Funko ever on this, and this is Eleven with Egos Funko. I just got this and she is my baby. She's my precious. I love the detail on this Funko so very much. So let's put her next to Daenerys. So the first book that I have here on this shelf is The Maze Runner by James Dashner. The first book in the Maze Runner trilogy. And then I have Isla and the Happily Ever After by Stephanie Perkins. The third book in the Anna and the French Kiss companion novels. The next one that I have here is Fangirl by Rainbow Rowell. Really cute read, but it's not my favorite. <laughs> like everyone loves Fangirl and I just really enjoyed it. Then I have The Way Back to You by Michelle Adriani and Mindy Scott. Got this one in America, so it has like a special sort of meaning to me. Still need to get to it though. <laughs> then I have The Fault in Our Stars by John Green. Don't really like this book to be honest. I mean, I think that I'm one of the very few people who thinks that. Um, then I have Ugly Love by Colleen Hoover. Another contemporary book here is Made You Up by Francesca Zappia. Then I have the second book in the Mortal Instruments trilogy by Cassandra Clare, City of Ashes. Still need to get to this one. I started the series, but I still need to continue with it. Then I have The Assassin's Blade by Sarah J. Mass. This is like four novella stories in the Throne of Glass world. Can't wait to get to it because of her great things about it. Then I have The Rose and the Dagger by Renee Audier. This is the second book in the Breath and the Dawn duology, I think it's called. Then I have My Life Next Door by Huntley Fitzpatrick. Another children's classic that I have right here is Alice's Adventures in Wonderland by Lewis Carroll. The last book that I have on this shelf right here is We Were Liars by E. Lockhart. Everyone was raving about this book two years ago and I quite enjoyed it, so yeah. Okay, so I've never been down here in this angle, but the last two shelves on this bookshelf. So the first book that I have right here is Shadow and Bone by Lee Bardugo. So sorry for this awkward position. And by the way, it's not the way that I want to sit, but I can't do anything else. Then I have Red Queen by Victoria Aviard, the first book in the Red Queen Quartet, I think it's gonna be. Then I have the first book in the Legend Trilogy by Mary Lou called Legend. Oh my God, what a coincidence. Then I have the first two books in the To All the Boys I Loved Before trilogy by Jenny Han. At first this was going to be a duology, but the third book is coming out in the beginning of May. So here is To All the Boys I Loved Before. And the second book, P.S. I Still Love You. And then I have the two books in, I think it's called The Vincent Boys duology by Abby Glant. So here I have The Vincent Boys and here are The Vincent Brothers. I've read the first 70 pages of The Vincent Boys and I thought that it was so like, no, no. I don't know if I'm ever gonna read this duology because it was too sort of like childish, teenagerish. I felt like it was written for 13 year olds, but who knows? Um, then I have Everything Everything by Nicola Yoon, a recent read and I really liked it. Can't wait for the movie to come out. And then I have Confess by Colleen Hoover. Oh, by the way, I also have a little owl keychain right here. Um, then I have Amy and Roger's Epic Detour by Morgan Matson, one of my favorite contemporary reads ever. Morgan Matson is an amazing woman. Um, then I have another book by Rainbow Rowell. This is Carry On, sort of like a Harry Potter, I wanted to say retelling, but it's not. It's like heavily inspired by Harry Potter. It's about Simon Snow and he's like the chosen wizard, um, but it sounds adorable. It's like a little bit of a fan fiction story. Then the last two books on here are Lola and the Boy Next Door by Stephanie Perkins, the second book in the Anna and the French Kiss companion novels. And then the last book is The Kill Order by James Dashner. This is sort of like the fourth book in the Maze Runner series. This is like a prequel. I don't think I will ever read this, but who knows? Let's just keep it on the shelves. On the last shelf right here. So the first book on this shelf is Illuminate by Amy Kaufman and Jerry Kristoff, a really fun sci-fi read. I really want to get the second book soon and I really want to read it. Um, then I have Ready Player One by Ernest Klein. A lot of people love this, still need to get to it. Um, then I have Wonder Lost by Jen Malone. This cover is 
my life, it's everything. Then I have The Scorched Trials by James Dashner, which is the second book in the original Maze Runner trilogy. Traitor to the Throne, right here, um, by Alwyn Hamilton. This is the second book in the Rebel of the Sands. I think it's gonna be a trilogy. Wing Jones by Katherine Weber, and this is so pretty. I love the colored pages. I've never had a book like that before. Then I have the first book in the Mortal Instruments series by Cassandra Clare, City of Bones. Really enjoyed this one. And then I have another book by Colleen Hoover because she's one of my favorite authors as well. This is It Ends With Us. Then I have the first book in the Anna and the French Kiss companion novels with Anna and the French Kiss by Stephanie Perkins. Here I have a really tiny book by Rainbow Rowell. It's called Kindred, I think is how you pronounce it, Spirits. And this was a little tiny short story for World Book Day, which you could buy. Um, or I think that some people have even got this for free, like in America at the bookstore, but I bought it with my own money and it was really cute. It was like about the Star Wars, uh, The Force Awakens premiere and people meeting each other there. It's really adorable. Then I have The Wrath and the Dawn by Renee Audier. This is the first book in the Wrath and the Dawn duology. Then the book that I'm currently reading because everyone has been talking about this book for like one and a half years right now and it is Simon versus the Homo Sapiens Agenda by Becky Albertalli and I've only read like 50 pages but I'm already really enjoying it. Um, and then one of my least favorite books ever is Paper Towns by John Green. I really did not like this but I'm just overall not a John Green fan. Um, but yeah, this was my first bookshelf. All right, now let's move to the next one and hopefully the angle won't be as awkward as this one. <laughs> this bookshelf has like a little bit of a different sort of like order or, you know, the first bookshelf is my Harry Potter shelf. I've decided that this shelf is gonna be dedicated to Harry Potter because, you know, it just has a special place in my heart, like for everyone. And the rest of the books I'm trying to sort of order on rainbow color as well, even though I don't really have that much color in this shelf. Let's start off with my Harry Potter collection. Um, so I have three Harry Potter Funkos, let's say that first. Um, this is also one of my favorite Funkos. It is Harry in his Quidditch uniform. Again, so much detail on it and I love it so very much. I'm just gonna put them on the ground right now. <laughs> um, then I have a Luna which is adorable. Again, she has strawberry earrings and a spider, um, what's this called again? A spider ring. That was a hard word. Um, she just is so cute. My last Funko is Hermione. Um, again, just adorable. So future Sabine here, um, Lightworks, my editing program, had an update, which is really great because right now if I have footage over 30 minutes it will split it in half and my second half of the video of the original footage was all messed up with the sound and my uh, mouth and the sound wasn't in sync and I hated it so very much so right now I am refilming my second part of the video so I hope you guys don't mind it that much so the first bookish item that I have on this shelf are the Harry Potter books this is a hardcover box set which I got from my parents as my 18th birthday present because I recently turned 18 on the 14th of April and these books are just mm, they're so stunning these are the most beautiful books that I own on my shelves the covers are just they're mind-blowing the artwork is so pretty um, I'm not gonna show them individually to you guys right now but I will upload a birthday book haul or at least I'm planning to make one and then I will show you guys the covers because they are so very special. Next to my box set, I have two other editions of the Harry Potter books. I bought these on sort of like the eBay of Holland. Um, these are two first editions of Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix and Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince. And even though after the third book, it's not that special to have um, the first editions, just still special to me. And then finally, I also have um, a Ravenclaw. A keychain because I bought this in Universal Orlando when I was there this past summer and it's really pretty and then my last two Harry Potter ish books are the illustrated editions so here's the illustrated edition of the Philosopher's Stone and by the way behind it I have my Funko Pop boxes because I do want to save them and then I have the Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets illustrated edition the second shelf right here let's start off on this side this is a book that I bought together with Karis from Karis on a Reading, and it is Holding Up the Universe by Jennifer Niven, and this is also my very first signed book. 
So here I have Jennifer Niven's uh, signature. Then I have my last John Green book that I own, and this is An Abundance of Catherines. Next, I have A Darker Shade of Magic and A Gathering of Shadow, both by V.E. Schwab. These are the first two books in the Darker Shade of Magic trilogy, and I'm currently drawing on the cover of A Darker Shade of Magic, so I still need to finish this. I have the third book in the Legend trilogy. This is Champion by Mary Lou. Next, another fantasy book that is high on my TBR pile is Never Night by Jay Kristoff. It's just a really stunning book. Then I have The Dream Thieves by Maggie Stiefather. This is the second book in the Raven Boys cycle, in the Raven cycle. And this is actually a funny one because this is an arc which was not supposed to be on sale, but on Amazon this was uh, being sold as a secondhand hardcover. Um, but I wasn't really happy with it because it's not a hardcover, but on the other hand, it's a really special kind of edition that I have an actual arc of a book. Next, I have The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas. Also, Ruin and Rising by Lee Bardugo, the third book in the Shadow and Bone trilogy. Then I have three books by Sarah J. Mass. The first one is A Court of Thorns and Roses, the first book in the Court of Thorns and Roses trilogy. I believe that there are also going to be more books after this original trilogy. And then I have two editions of Crown of Midnight, which is the second book in the Throne of Glass um, series. First off, a paperback. This is the first edition that I bought. And then I have the hardcover, which is just too gorgeous and it was really cheap, so I had to get it and I'm really happy with it. After that, I have The Winner's Curse by Marie Rutkowski, the first book in the Winner's Trilogy. This one is with the ugly covers because this one just looks so much alike Crown of Midnight. It is absolutely crazy. Then I have another book by Victoria V.E. Schwab. This is uh, This is Savage Song, the first book in the Savage Song duology. I don't know what the duology um, is called. And then after that, I have a super tiny book. These are, uh, this is Life Before Legend, and these are two stories told from the point of view from Day and June. It's so tiny, um, but I am putting it still on my shelf. Then I have Autumn in the City of Angels, a novel by Kirby Howell, which is an indie author book, and I won this in a giveaway, which is really awesome. I have one of my very few Dutch books that I own, and this is I Am Number Four by Pitticus Lore, I think, and I don't know, this is a series, but I don't know how many books there are in the series, but I don't think that I will ever get to it. But whatever, I can still display it on my shelves. Siege and Storm by Lee Burke Dugo, the second book in the Shadow and Bone trilogy. Next, I have another box set. And like I told you guys, I don't really buy box sets that often, but this is the Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children box set by Ransom Riggs. And the word peculiar is really hard for me to pronounce, but let's get them out of the box because these are easy to put back. So the first one, of course, is Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children. Then I have Hollow City second book and finally the third book is library of souls and i think this cover is the prettiest it's just really kind of creepy and i believe the books are supposed to be kind of like creepy as well and in the box set you also get a postcard of peculiar personae or like the the characters in the books and on the back of it you have their signatures it's a really fun box set, so I cannot wait to get to this series. And I have the Dutch edition of The Fault in Our Stars. This one is called Een Weefout in Onze Sterre, of course, by John Green. Next, I have another awesome, or at least I've heard, it's an awesome fantasy book, Caravel by Stephanie Garber. And look at how gorgeous this one is. Next to that, I have um, A Study in Charlotte by Brittany Cavallero, I think is how you pronounce her name. So this book is one of three in a trilogy, and this follows the stories of uh, Watson and Sherlock descendants, and I don't know, it sounds really, really good. And the last two books here that I have on the shelf are The Art of Being Normal by Lisa Williamson, and If I Was Your Girl by Meredith Russo. These both are transgender stories. Okay, so another awkward position. Um, but the last shelf starts off with History is All You Left Me by Adam Silvera. I've heard that this is a really good, sad, contemporary story, but cannot wait to get to it. Next to that, I have Beautiful Broken Things by Sarah Bernard. And after that, I have Radio Silence by Alice Oseman. Again, gorgeous, gorgeous cover. Then I have the last Morgan Matson book that I own, and that is The Unexpected Everything, which came out last year, and I, no, I didn't buy this in America. I bought it after America, but I still can't wait to get to it. 
Um, then I got a book which I got for my birthday from Karis, from Karis on Reading, and it is all about Mia by Lisa Williamson, the same author of The Art of Being Normal, which I absolutely adored. So I really want to read more of Lisa Williamson. And then the last two books that I have on the shelves are Am I Normal Yet by Holly Bourne, which I constantly confuse with The Art of Being Normal, like. Those two titles, they confuse me sometimes. And then the last book is by Sarah Dessen, Along for the Ride. So yeah, that was my second shelf. And right now let's go back to the old Sabine from the original footage. Bye. <laughs> okay guys, so I've recorded over 30 minutes right now and that was my bookshelf tour. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, I think personally that I have quite a lot of books. Some people might think that this is like way too much and that I need to stop buying books. But personally, I just can't. And other people might think that I don't have that many books, but it's hard to fit a ton of books in my room because I don't have like this huge room. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel to see more of my videos. You guys can also follow me on all of my social media pages, uh, especially Goodreads. It would be awesome if you would follow me on that. So uh, you can add me on Goodreads, like I said, on Instagram, on Snapchat, and you can even send me emails if you want to. Links to that will all be also in the description down below. Again, thank you guys so much for watching this video and I will see you guys next time.